This is the right man to head up Star Wars? Over the past year, there has been a swarm of declarations that Dave Filoni be named the head of Star Wars Creative. This is ostensibly based on two things. One, an Ahsoka-heavy final season of The Clone Wars that pushed the credulity of viewers to the max in relation to Revenge of the Sith. And two, a poorly executed but popular second season of The Mandalorian. All the plot holes, lore issues, and in-show continuity inconsistencies have been well documented by several channels. Go check out past live streams and episode reviews. Aside from those practical reasons, Filoni has shown a condescending, almost hostile attitude toward true fans. First, we'll take a quick look at the now infamous footage from the National Center for Women and Information Technology Summit in 2016. Then, we will look at some choice clips from his 2016 interview on the Star Wars show from a few months later in August of 2016. Note the flat-out lies, or at the very least, delusion in the interview. Because older fans are complaining, why is this, you're making it for kids. That's the funniest thing anybody ever says to me, you're making Star Wars for kids. I'm like, yeah, we haven't done a movie for 10 years, and here comes a Star Wars film, and here comes Ray. And it's, what is it? Is it Panic in the Streets? Oh my gosh, a female lead in a Star Wars movie. And then the trailer for Rogue One comes out, and it's another female lead. Oh my gosh, how unfair. We've had probably like two million straight film cinematic roles where men have been leads, and now we've done two in a row that are women. Uh, well, too bad. Oh well. Just strong women characters, intelligent women characters, characters of all description. Uh, it won't just stop with two movies. It's something we're dedicated to uh, for the foreseeable future because they're just great characters. Thank you so much. I want Lucasfilm to always be what I dreamed it to be, which I think it is. It's this great place where these great stories and characters and technologies all come together and have the opportunity to flourish. And there have been so many people that have contributed in a big way. J.W. Rinsler, Karen Travis, Alan Dean Foster, and I knew so many of their names before I got here. Mm -hmm. I knew who Lynn Hale was before I started working here because I knew Lucasfilm. Right. And I feel a responsibility to not just maintain but help be a part of what pushes it all forward, mm -hmm. you know, and keeps it viable and exciting uh, for future storytellers. And Kathy's really leading that charge, which is great. Fade in. One of the most recent things was the reintroduction of Thrawn back, mm -hmm. into, back into, you know, the canon storytelling. I wasn't in the room at Celebration, but I was out on our stage. And oh, seeing right, yeah. people absolutely lose it <laughs> was, yeah. like, I teared up. Like, it was, it was so touching. I clapped, I clapped when I saw it. There's this notion that everything changed and when everything became legends. And I can see why people think that. But, you know, having worked with George, I can tell you that it was always very clear, and he made it very clear, that the films, and the TV shows were the only thing that he considered canon. That was it. Mm -hmm. So everything else was a world of fun ideas, exciting characters, great possibilities. But the EU was created to explore all those things. And I know and I fully respect people's opinion about it that some of the material said the next canon part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like from the filmmaking world that I was brought into... The TV series, the films were it. Mm -hmm. They were set in stone. So it was not a big change for me when everyone was saying it's everything's legend status now. I'm like, yeah, that's what I've always understood. It's all legend status. If it was all legend status before, then what was the purpose in slapping a banner on it? Filoni clearly doesn't have an understanding of the hierarchy that was in place before the Disney acquisition. What I've been able to do on Clone Wars is the same thing that George was doing in the prequels, which is, you know, George, like, um, Ayla Sakura. Ayla Sakura gets pulled out of the comic books, and now she's walking in the Jedi Temple. You know, um, in Clone Wars, there were several things from the expanded universe that, you know, hey, we need a, we need a, a gang. Uh, we need another kind of mafia group, not just the Huts. Okay, Black Sun. What about Black Sun? Let's look at that. That exists. And I've always leaned towards the, if we're going to create something... We should check and see if it existed already to the fans. 
because it has way more value if we bring that in. And right. it's like, why would I just replace it with something new? Let's stop right there for a moment and recognize that there is a difference between honoring EU lore by inserting stuff into the films and completely bastardizing characters like Barriss Afi and Quinlan Voss. We won't even go into the Mandalorians. So no, Dave, you aren't doing the same thing George was doing. You were stealing ideas from EU creators and dishonoring them. It has less value, you unaware dolt. Yeah, I could create a new guy, sure. But what about Thrawn? We haven't ruined him yet. Thrawn is great. Thrawn is a character we all know. Thrawn has a lot of credibility. He used to, anyway. You know, I don't want to use it and make it something completely different. That's rude. What do you think you've been doing, you twat? I'm hopeful that our Thrawn hits the right notes. And, you know, Tim seemed to enjoy it. And we sent him the scripts. I documented Timothy Zahn's motivations in this video. You always know you can't please everybody, this is true. so that's just a fact. But No, you can't please everybody, but pleasing the general audience and being true to the EU material are not mutually exclusive. You could have created the same amount of interest in the Clone Wars had you consulted those who knew the material and had you taken their advice. Other than Filoni's condescending and flat-out wrong takes on canon, what he stated in the earlier video indicates he is completely on board with the woke direction of Star Wars, up to and including the Disney trilogy. My friend OG Star Wars found in the Art of the Mandalorian book that Filoni was inspired by Ryan Johnson, the architect of the most singular instance of Star Wars destruction in history. Let's read. Filoni recounted that, Ryan Johnson had me right up next to him with the camera, giggity. He shoved the lenses in my hand and said, Look through here. He would bring me along to show me how to block a scene. Ryan was so supportive of my interest in doing live action, as was his producer, Ram Bergman. They really made me feel like this was something that I could do. Knowing all this, please tell me why Filoni is one of the right people for Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Thank you